Russell Gahagan here from Russell's Fishing Tech. Coming back at you with another video. It is definitely winter time now, unfortunately. I think here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, we've had, you know, multiple days now of, of sub-zero temperatures with the wind chills, around zero or a couple of degrees over. We're definitely in the heat of the winter. What's the good news? That means we're that much closer to spring. Uh, hopefully we are looking at maybe 60 days. I'm hoping, cross my fingers, hopefully maybe even 45 days if everything goes right, and we'll be out on Lake Michigan catching some brown trout, maybe even some spring cohos. So that's actually the topic today. We're going to talk spring cohos and what it takes to get on that program. Uh, when I do salmon schools, one of the things I suggest all the time um, to my attendees at the salmon schools are spring cohos are a great way to get confidence in your boat, in your tackle, and your program. What do I mean by that? Well, cohos are the most aggressive eaters of all the salmon and trout species. That's why the DNR uh, originally put cohos in the lake before kings uh, because cohos actually are way more aggressive than king salmon are. Um, so they're, what, what does that mean? They're, they're a little easier to catch in general. When they do decide to feed, uh, you can get multiples on at a time. Uh, they can be really aggressive uh, and be aggressive multiple times a day. So let's start off with what that situation is. So basically spring coho fishing starts as soon as the ice is off the water on the southern end of Lake Michigan. All the way down to the southern basin uh, of Portage, Indiana, which is basically the southern tip, uh, I guess, or the southern end, uh, whatever word you, word you want to use, and then kind of starts to filter up both shorelines. So already in late February, early March, whenever they can get break the ice and get out in Portage, Indiana, they'll catch cohos, um, and then they'll start to work their way up both shorelines in Michigan City, Indiana gets hot, uh, Chicago, Illinois gets hot, and they start to work their way north. What I found last year when heading down to Portage to attack those spring cohos, and I made a slide diver video that particular day, um, myself, Captain Matt Clinton, and Lily the Pounder uh, had a pretty good day catching fish. We didn't limit out or anything, but we had a good day for early season uh, spring cohos. Um, we actually found that Salmon Candy's mini spoons were actually the go-to and, and outperformed crankbaits and dodgers. Uh, colors like, you know, Salmon Candy Steely Candy, uh, Orange Stud UV, uh, Mountain Dew Stud, UV Two Face, Dew Frog, and Wonder Wolverine. All those kinds of colors and even a few more seem to outproduce crankbaits and dodgers in that March time frame, that really early season spring cohos when they're biting on the south end of the lake and they really haven't migrated their way up at all. Now in April, Lily and I headed down to Waukegan, Illinois and fished with Captain Dave on Bear King Charters. I gave a live fishing report that day. I don't remember the exact date, but I'm thinking it's early to mid-April. Um, and we went fishing. We limited out on a three-person limit of, actually, it might have been a four-person, four-person limit, I believe. Um, we had four of us. I think a friend, Matt, went along. Um, and we actually limited out that day. We did catch a couple on dodgers and flies, but we actually, again, did much better on our salmon candy mini spoons than we did on the dodgers and flies that day. But you could tell it was starting to turn towards that dodger and fly bite. Uh, we saw other boats catching some on dodgers and flies, and we had some success on dodgers and flies as well. As you get through April or go towards the end of April and get in that April to June time frame, which is sort of the core uh, coho months for Sheboygan, Port Washington, Milwaukee, I think up the other side, maybe like Saugatuck, uh, Holland, um, St. Joe, you know, that late April and the early May, June time frame is when we really get good coho fishing up the shoreline a little bit on both sides of Lake Michigan. Dodgers start to really take over. You can still catch some cohos on spoons, but the Dodger program really starts to take over. And there's really two types of Dodgers that I use for cohos. One is your standard double O Dodger. Now this one I'm holding up here, there's nothing standard about it, but the size is the double O size. This is a gold star double O Dodger. And this particular size is a, um, you know, is a standard amongst almost every coho fisherman up and down Lake Michigan. The old Lure Jensen double O red Dodger or orange Dodgers um, were a go-to for many, many anglers um, for many years and still are today. Uh, the Gold Star Double O Dodger is as well a go-to for many anglers um, today. That is a great Dodger, in my opinion, for 
downriggers. Um, it's great for planer boards. And it, I mean, it'll work on any type of setup. It's just a go-to. We have a custom line of colors through Salmon Candy on Silver Hordes Double O Dodgers. And then on the next one that I'm going to talk about the Stubby Dodger. Now, in the last couple of years, there's been kind of a new player in the game when it comes to coho fishing. And it's a Dodger called the Stubby Dodger. And that's this Dodger right here. It's a little bit wider profile, a little bit different shape, as you can see <clears throat> with its counterpart, the Double O. Uh, for me personally, I had tremendous success last year with the Stubby Dodger in our custom painted colors. Last year, I think we had three or four colors. We've expanded that to six colors this year. We've got a UV fire dot available in, all these colors are available in the double O and the stubby. We've got a UV fire dot. We've got a, I always get these screwed up. I think this is the reverse coho killer. We've got a Jaeger bomb. Got a steely candy. We've got a Winx UV, and we've got a Coho Killer. As I said, we've got all six of those colors. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, all six of those colors available in both the double O size and the stubby size. But when it comes to the stubby, where I saw tons of success last year was on the slide divers. That really seemed to be the go-tos. We did have some luck with them on the downriggers. Occasionally had some bites on them on boards. But in particular, the stubbies really seem to work firing on those slide divers. And there was a lot of days where those were our go-to baits. Um, Captain Matt and I fished out of port a lot in the month of May and early June. Um, and we traveled south of Port Washington and had some phenomenal days. Uh, we took our painter, uh, Nick Ackley, from Doc's Custom Crankbaits one day. I think just him and I and Lily went one day. Um, I think we might have made another trip with some friends of his. And we, we cranked on them uh, cohos south of port. Uh, multiple trips in a row and the stubbies really were doing the heavy lifting in that mid to late May time frame and the double O Dodgers were helping as well just like the Dodgers being two different sizes and types there's two different sizes of flies that I like for for coals uh, the first one is probably the, the ever most popular coal fly out there which is the peanut uh, size wise it's very small it's like a two inch fly uh, it's tied on a treble hook and this particular one is like our vanilla ice UV. Um, that peanut fly is very small and it works very good early in the year. So as soon as you're going to start using Dodgers in that middle of April time frame or towards end of April or whatever, peanut flies are the go-to. Peanut flies will continue to work throughout the entire time that you're going to fish cohos. But in my opinion, as you get into like towards Memorial Day weekend, the peanut flies will start to peter out on their success rate. And that's when I like to go to like a three inch slider fly which is this one right here. And what's unique about uh, Salmon Candy's three inch slider fly is just like our, our King flies, you can actually slide the fly up and off the leader um, if you wanna change colors very quickly. But like here's our No Mercy UV tied on a, a slider rig, which is also tied, you know, set up or set up on a leader with our, uh, our go-to Addy uh, No Bite Off hook. That way, when the cohos are doing that crazy coho shuffle behind the boat, they won't be able to pin that line in there like they like to do and pull the hook free out of their mouth. Um, I like that three inch fly starting around that Memorial Day weekend time and then go into uh, June with that little bit bigger fly. As we continue to progress, you can catch coals obviously all the way through June, July, and August. But what I see happen is once we get in towards that July time frame, all of this kind of stuff, the Dodgers, the mini spoons, all of that kind of goes away and we start to catch cohos as they get bigger on our salmon gear. What I mean by that is on regular eight inch flashers, regular four inch salmon flies, standard size spoons, maybe even magnum spoons, you'll start to catch some five, six, seven pound, and maybe even bigger if you're lucky, cohos on that gear. The smaller stuff starts to go away as we're not fishing um, sort of the same type of fishing we were doing in April, May, June uh, for the cohos. Lead lengths. Um, what I what I found works for me. Basically, with the lead lengths of the peanut fly or the slider fly, I find anything between 12 and 18 inches seems to work fine. For me personally, I like 15 inches on the double O Dodgers, and I like 18 inches on the stubby. 
I think the stubby is a little bit more aggressive. It's a little bigger profile, a little bit longer lead behind it, I think um, is good. Um, like I said, I like 15 on the double O and 18 inches on the stubby. Uh, everybody's going to have a little different choice there, as I recommend with salmon flies as well. Just keep them all the same, meaning put all your double O's as 15 and all your stubbies as 18. Or if you're going to do 12 and 15 or 15 on everything, that's fine. Just be the same across the board per size at least so that when you put that stuff out there, they're all acting the same in the water and you can create a program. I do use 50 pound fluorocarbon on my fly leaders. I think that's really important, especially with that shorter lead there and a smaller profile fly in the water to get good kick out of that fly. Make sure you're using fluorocarbon. Plus, coals are as aggressive and as hard on equipment as any fish out there. I talk, say that all the time, a four pound coho will terrorize your gear as much as a 20 pound salmon will or more. So having that bigger bulkier line is really important for you to be able to keep them on the hook and get them in the boat. Uh, types of setups we're using, it's kind of like brown trout fishing and then sort of transitions into salmon fishing. Right away in the spring of the year in that March, April time frame, we're usually fishing inside of 30 foot of water. So we're going to use the same program as our brown trout setups. We're going to use a lot of these lightweight um, inline sinker setups like we talked about in our, my brown trout video last week with the same type of leaders and the same type of line. The only difference is, I said earlier, I might do a 10 or 12 pound test, um, you know, with it for brown trout. You can get away with that for cohos because they're small as well, but I probably will bump it up to 20. Again, I don't think they're as picky when it comes to, uh, you know, the line and things like that. And they do swirl around, twist around and make a bunch of uh, commotion in the water. They can damage your gear. So you may bust off some if you keep that 10 or 12 pound test on that you had for brown trout. We're using these on planer boards, fishing primarily in that, you know, top half of the water column inside of 30 foot real early in the year. Harbor mouth areas, warm water discharge areas, same areas you'll find brown trout here in Sheboygan. You'll find cohos down in Portage, Michigan City, um, Chicago, things like that. River outlets, um, harbor areas, and power plant areas, uh, warm water discharges. Uh, are great. That's why the Old Creek Power Plant, every year in March and April when guys are brown trout fishing, they'll catch a batch of cohos in there as well and, and catch them on their, their mini spoons and their stick baits and stuff like that. So these same inline sinkers are the program then. As we get into that Memorial Day weekend, uh, early June time frame and the water starts to warm and the fish go down a little bit, now we might be fishing those cohos out in that 80 to 150 foot of water range, but fishing them probably up in the top 30. Now we're gonna start using lead core, weighted steel, shorter coppers, things like that to attack those cohos up in the top 30 with success. Um, one thing we can use both early spring and early summer is slide divers. Um, whether you wanna use the mini slide diver like we're using for brown trout, which is what I'll start off the year with, uh, the smaller one, because we're gonna fish in that 30 foot or less, like I said, and probably target the top half of the water column primarily. Um, I'm going to use that mini slide diver. And then if we're going to get out towards that, uh, you know, 80 to 150 area, and we're going to start to try to catch them 15, 20, 25, 30 down, I'd probably switch that to a standard size slide diver. And that's what Matt and I really saw success with last year. Um, you know, when we did, I think, a live video maybe with Doc and, and we're showing some of the stuff that was working uh, <clears throat> that particular day, we did really well with standard size slide divers on mono line with uh, um, the stubby dodgers. And then I believe we did real well with like five colors of lead core and 100 foot weighted steels uh, with double O dodgers. Uh, uh, were real good those particular days as well. Then I think we were using primarily peanut flies, a couple of the sliders. Um, and then as the summer went along, like I said, we got into the early June and stuff, then the sliders became a little bit more popular. So sort of a recap, Get ready for it. It's not going to be long. And if you're able to travel to the southern end of Lake Michigan, or if you live on the southern end of Lake Michigan, coho fishing is going to come quick. Probably going to start here in 45 days or so. Mini spoons, salmon candies mini spoon, right out the gate uh, in the uh, ice out cohos. And then as we get into late April and into May and June, we're going to go with salmon candies custom double O dodgers. We're going to go with salmon candies custom stubby dodgers and we're going to use a mixture of peanut flies early slider flies later uh, and we're going to have a ton of success it's a ton of fun everybody can catch a ton of fish 
uh, cohos can be one of the easier species to catch, which is why it can help build your confidence right away in the spring and have you feeling good about your uh, salmon and trout setup. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. We're getting a ton of views on these videos, which is awesome. Tell your friends about them, but hit the subscribe so you get a notification when we put out a new video. And also don't forget, you can pick up any of the salmon candy stuff at www.salmoncandyfishing.com. And if you want to check out my Russell's Fishing Tech stuff, that's www.russellsfishingtech.net. Have a great day. Good luck fishing when you get out there.